I just had the extreme luck of being able to visit one of only three Digimon cafes that opened across Japan in April 2024. Digimon is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Digimon Adventure anime with a pop-up cafe in Tokyo's Ikebukuro district, Osaka's Dotanbori district, and Nagoya in the Aichi prefecture. This is an inside look at the cafe experience, Digimon Adventure Nijugo Shunen Cafe Bokura no Memories. First off, I need to explain to you how lucky I was to be able to get a reservation at this place. This was not sponsored. I was not invited as someone who talks Digimon on YouTube or anything like that. I had a Japan vacation already scheduled for April, which cleared one obstacle of getting in, but then there was the lottery system reservations. You can't just walk into these Digimon cafes, it's appointment only. A week or two before my trip, they opened up an online application where you choose your preferred location, your preferred dates, and your preferred times. A few days after the application window closed, I was sent a confirmation email with a QR code to show upon arrival. So getting in was a mixture of right place, right time, and an incredible dice roll with the lottery style reservation system. We arrived in Ikebukuro, an extremely pop culture focused area of Tokyo. The reservation mentioned and gallery as well as Lab 1 Life Select as the address, so I was a little confused as to where I was supposed to go, but when I arrived at Lab 1 Life Select, it was a 7 floor electronics store with phones on the ground level, toys and games on the 6th floor, and everything else in between. On the 7th floor, however, was a handful of restaurants and cafes including and gallery. Thanks to a massive Digimon Adventure design on the shop window, there was no mistaking I was in the right place. We showed some ID and our reservation QR code, then we were let in and shown to our table. On the way to our seats, we got a sneak peek at the cafe exclusive items that were for sale, as well as a couple items that were only available with the purchase of certain menu items. There was an awesome photo op corner featuring the Adventure 1999 Digimon in a very cute art style that, to my knowledge, is custom made and unique to this 25th anniversary cafe experience. Over the speakers, all of your favorite Digimon theme songs were playing, from Braveheart to The Biggest Dreamer and of course Butterfly. On TV monitors across the cafe, trailers for the new Digivice 25th Color Revolution, the Blu-ray release of Digimon Adventure Zero to the Beginning, and that Digimon Animation official 25th anniversary special thing that they premiered at Digimon Con. Upon sitting down, we were instantly given two promo cards just for coming, a random selection of the chosen children, and we got TK and Kari, which ruled. This isn't the Digimon TCG or anything, just a cool collectible card. You were also given these Digivice coasters with every order, again, at random, but again, we got TK and Kari's Digivices, as well as Ty and Matt's, which was super lucky. We got the sibling pairs. Looking around, it was entirely adult Digimon fans, mostly groups of two just like us, probably ages mid-20s to mid-30s, and probably 90% women, which I bring up because I think it's important to remember Digimon isn't just the boys version of Tamagotchi like it's sometimes thought as. Don't let others tell you that Digimon is just a thing for boys, and don't tell yourself that either, it's clearly not true. As for what we ordered, I wanted to try as much as I could to show off more stuff in this video, but it simply wasn't possible for two people to order every item on the menu without exploding, and I didn't want to get sick overseas. So first I ordered the 25th anniversary mini parfait, which came with a reusable souvenir cup. They provided the parfait and the cup separately, which in my mind I know is very practical since I would be taking the cup home, but in my heart I kind of wish it looked like the picture. That wasn't an issue for the next few things we ordered though. We had to try a drink and settled on the Hikari themed strawberry milk whip that came with a very cute charm of Kari and Gatamon. Next we got the Digitama hide and seek pasta, which came with these Palmon, Gomamon, and Gatamon kind of foam cutout kind of things. After snapping some pictures and videos, I took them off so they wouldn't get food stains and so that I could keep them too. This dish looked just like the picture and tasted great, which was a relief because I'm sometimes suspicious about the quality of the food at these pop-up cafes. Finally, as far as food purchases go, I went for the curry dish, the Let's Eat with Agumon and Gabumon meat curry. I'm a curry fiend, but I also wanted this dish because it was the only way to get this incredible souvenir drawstring bag. It's a perfect fit for the bento box we own, and it's a perfect thing to hold all my new Digimon Cafe souvenirs, like the little Agumon and Gabumon guys it came with. Again, this dish also tasted great. I actually went to the Digimon Adventure Try pop-up cafe in 2018, and while overall I loved that experience, I had this blue curry dish at the time that was practically inedible, gross to look at, and even worse to eat, so I was glad that this dish tasted as good as it did. After eating, taking pictures and videos, and listening to some great Digimon music, it was time for me to grab some of the exclusive merchandise that wasn't tied to dishes like the pouch and the cup were. They had everything you could buy out on display, including stuff that was sold out unfortunately. It was only day three of the cafe and already the acrylic hair clips were completely sold out. I was pretty bummed about this because I thought a hair clip would be such a fun souvenir considering the whole Sora and Tai hair clip fiasco in Digimon the movie, but it wasn't meant to be. What was available was the little file folder. These are everywhere in Japan and I'm actually a huge fan. I got a Ghost Game and Digimon Frontier one elsewhere, a Kingdom Hearts one, a Seto Kaiba one, but I digress. There was also a memorial diorama set, not really my thing and a bit expensive at 7,000 yen, but very cool. There was a clear card collector 
collector's item that was different from the cards we were given just for visiting, and really nice Digimon Adventure pens that kind of matched the souvenir cup. There was also a Digimon 25th Anniversary Parka, aka a hoodie. At 9,800 yen, it wasn't at the top of my list, and not really my style. In addition to the pouch and the cup, I opted for two of the pens, the file folder to hold all my new collectible cards and coasters, and one of the clear cards. It was a random pull, and we got another Kari. Then, after paying our bill and doing some posing by the photo wall, it was basically time to go. I had a terrific time here, it was a huge nostalgia trip, and very surreal to be in Japan in a Digimon-themed cafe 25 years after I first fell in love with the series through the animated show. I'm not reviewing or rating the cafe, but I've been to a couple of these, so I'd like to make a couple of comparisons if that's alright. I mentioned the 2018 Digimon Adventure Try Cafe already, and I think it did some things better and some things worse. Worse would be the food, as I mentioned, again, the blue curry haunts my nightmares. However, the 2018 Try Cafe did a cool thing where they had the Japanese actors for Agumon and Taichi record some custom dialogue for the cafe experience. It played over the speakers, they basically welcomed you to the cafe when every table was seated, and then said a little goodbye at the end, uh, thanks for coming when we left. I always remember thinking that was incredibly cool. One other memory I have of the 2018 Try Cafe was that there was a little book visitors could sign on their way out. You were meant to leave messages to fellow Digimon fans who would be visiting after you. I thought this was beautiful, as it was full of messages and drawings from not just Japanese fans, but also visitors from all around the globe. Messages in French, Spanish, English. To this day, I remember a message that said, Never give up. Digimon is all around the world. It felt like I was in the Zero Two World Tour arc, or the climax of our war game. Digidestin from all around the world sending messages to cheer each other on. Nothing quite like that was here in the 2024 cafe, but it's not the end of the world, just a fond memory I have of 2018's Tri Cafe. On this same 2024 trip, we also checked out the Oran High School Host Club Cafe in Akihabara. Something I liked there that was missing here was this kind of museum exhibit feeling. At the Oran Cafe, the walls were lined with stunning art from the manga, from original promotional material, some art we've never seen before, and it made the cafe feel like you were in an Oran art exhibit. This new Digimon Cafe had monitors showing commercials for products and one nostalgic video throwback. Considering this was celebrating the 25th anniversary of Digimon Adventure, I think it would have been cool if there was some kind of walkthrough memory lane situation, like, I don't know, cells of animation from the original anime put in frames on the walls or something, and I only bring these things up as ways that an already awesome experience could have been made even better, in the small chance that someone who's responsible for these cafes is watching. So that was Digimon Adventure Nijugo Shunen Cafe Bokuda no Memories. I hope you enjoyed the look inside. I'm extremely grateful that I had such a good cosmic dice roll and ended up being at the right place at the right time in Japan on vacation exactly when this opened, and that they were okay with me filming as much as I did. Let me know what you thought about the cafe, what your dream Digimon Cafe or Digimon Real World experience would look like. Thanks for watching. My next video will be Beyblade Part 4. I appreciate you waiting while I was on vacation. I'm happy to be back. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.